Hi, so we're going to take a look at programming the distance sensor here in Vexcode EXP. So what we have is we have a file that's been saved as distance sensor. We're downloading into slot one. We have a controller uh, that has been wirelessly paired with the brain. And the controller is then plugged in with a USB cable into the computer that we're programming on. Uh, we're going to download the program to update it on the brain and then run the program on the, the um, robot that you see in the video down to your left. Okay, so let's take a look at the program that we already have running here. So what I have here is I have a when started, and then I have a repeat block, which I'm going to repeat for 100 uh, times. And then we have drive forward 10 millimeters. We have print distance 7 uh, in millimeters on console and set cursor to the next line. And then we have a wait one second. So those three lines of code are going to be repeated 100 times. I've already set up my, uh, my devices. So I have a drivetrain here in port six and 10 with the motors in port six and 10. I've also added a distance sensor just by add device and then distance sensor and choosing the port. Okay, so uh, let's take, also take a look at the, the uh, Python code here. Okay, so we have, Vex, uh, we have a couple of, uh, of global variables defined outside of, a, uh, of our function. So notice we have our function here. These variables decide, defined outside of the function are going to have a scope that's going to be global. So they're going to be available um, anywhere outside of the function. Notice that we bring, those, we, we bring those into the function using the global keyword here and then uh, basically bring the global variables into the, local, into the function and turn them into local variables. Uh, inside of that function. And then we have a four repeat count in range 100. So that's our, you know, how many times we're going to repeat it. Uh, this is our, iter you know, our, our uh, variable that we're using for our iteration, right? So basically we have repeat count, four repeat count in range 100. So we have each number in range 100, right? Uh, and then we're going to drive train forward for 10 millimeters, weight equals true. And then we have our print to console command, um, uh, that we're using to uh, to print out our value to the console. Wait one second, and then we have that wait five milliseconds that's always present inside of these loops uh, in in uh, that are written um, using the blocks code. Okay, we then have a calibrate drivetrain, and then when started one. So basically, we're calling this calibrate drivetrain, which is added uh, when you add a drivetrain as a as a device. And then we call our when started. So basically the execution goes from line one to line 15. When we get to line 15, we call uh, this function, which is our when started one function. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at what's happening here. So basically what we have is we have a, uh, a robot which uh, has a distance sensor on the front. We put a buckyball directly in front of that sensor just for demonstration purposes here. Uh, and as this, uh, as this code um, uh, executes, the robot's going to get closer and closer to the, uh, to the buckyball, and we're going to see what the value is on the distance sensor. This is, this is a necessary step. So when you're programming against a new piece of hardware, you're always going to want to see what that outputs. So you, you know, you're in your control system, in this case, VexCode EXP. You've got your controller. You've got some sensor data coming in, and you just want to see what's happening. You want to see what's actually coming into the program, and that's what this printout to console is going to do for us. So let's go ahead and download and run this. Okay, so let's so it's downloaded to the robot. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so notice that the distance sensor is now seeing the buckyball, right? So it's can now counting down each time. Notice that it's driving 10 millimeters. Each time it goes about 10 millimeters closer. Of course, the wheels are slipping a bit. Now it gets down to 91, 85, 76, 67, 58, and 39. And we notice the buckyball going to the side of the sensor at this point, right? It gets down to 13, 11. Ooh, now it goes to 658. Okay, so what is happening here, all right? Well, what is happening is the, the, the distance sensor only has a particular range, right? So in front of the distance sensor, it sees some, some uh, you know, it's not 180 degrees. It doesn't see all, with, all the way to, uh, um, to its edges. And basically what is happening here is the buckyball is to the side of the sensor. So we take a look at this again. 
you know, the buckyball comes in, it gets closer and closer, the distance sensor reads closer and closer, but then it gets funneled off to the right, right? And it gets pushed, maybe hits the sensor, gets goes off to the right here, and at that point, the distance sensor is no longer sensing the ball because it's just out of its range of view, or it's a, you know, range. View range, view range of view. Anyway, uh, so so basically, we just have to be aware of that. So maybe we need some more metal here. Maybe we need a, a, a better design to funnel this in. Um, but let's take a look at how we could program against this. So basically, we have this. We know what the distance is. So let's go ahead. Let's say we wanted to make a decision based upon that. Okay. So uh, so let's say that we had. We're repeating this for a hundred times. Let's say. Uh, uh, if, if, and then we're going to do an if statement. Okay, and let's let's watch it as the as the Python is built here as well. So, so remember that we have our loop here. So we're inside of this loop block. Notice we we uh, we uh, then are, are uh, tabbing in one tab, and then we have an if statement. And notice that we don't have right now. It's if false, right? But uh, we don't have our condition yet. So let's go ahead and let's say that uh, if. And let's say our distance, let's duplicate this. Okay, let's say if our distance, distance seven, object distance in millimeters is greater than, and let's say, uh, let's say, notice how we got down to like 20, let's say 30, okay, or even 40. So remember that we're, we don't want to get down exactly to the end, because remember it gets pushed off, right? So our, so when we were taking a look here, notice it got down to 11, but really, like, it could have gotten pushed off a little bit earlier. So I think 30 is kind of a safe bet here. Uh, if it was driving faster, we might have to switch these around. Uh, and so basically, if the distance center object distance is, is in millimeters is greater than 30, then uh, do this, right? Okay. Uh, wait one, and you know, do this and then wait one second. Now, let's say that I want to, which is all well and good, okay? But let's say that I want to repeat this until... This happens. So right now, uh, well, let's just let's just go ahead and take a look here. So let's go ahead and download our program to our robot, and let's see what happens. So we're so if we're going to repeat this 100 times, right? And then inside of that repeat 100, we say if the distance sensor of object distance in millimeters is greater than 30, then do this, right? So then we're moving forward 10 millimeters. Then we print to the console to see what's happening. We wait one second. Uh, just so we can kind of slow things down and, and kind of take a look, right? Okay, so let's take a look at our Python code here. So we have our inside of our definition, that's our when started. We bring in our global variables. We do our loop, right? We repeat. And then inside of our loop, we're saying if, you know, the distance is in millimeters is greater than 30, we drive forward. We print out to the console in line 9, and then we wait one second in line 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so here we go, driving forward as expected. It's getting closer, 53, 37. Okay, and basically that ends, right? So, so now our code is still repeating though. Okay, so notice that we're repeat one 100 times. So this code is still running in here. <clears throat> so let's say that we wanted to, let's say we wanted to, uh, after we do this, let's say we wanted to back up, okay? Uh, so let's say after we repeat this 100 times, we want to back up, but we don't want to, we don't want to wait for all 100 repeats. So then maybe we'd bring over, um, instead of, uh, uh, maybe we, instead of that, we do if uh, distance center is greater than 30. Then we might do drive forward for one second. Sorry, drive forward for 10 milliseconds. But then if if it is greater, uh, you know, if it's not greater than 30, then say that we want to uh, break. Okay, so this break is going to basically exit the loop early. So let's, so if we go through here and we go, hey, if it's greater than 130, keep going 100 times, right? Otherwise break. All right. Okay, and let's say we don't know, like let's say we don't know the distance, you know, let's say we don't know if it's 500 or if it's 1,000 or we don't know what the limit is, right? Well, what this allows us to do then by using this break, this condition with the break, let's say we just put it in a forever loop, right? 
Okay. And if this gets to, uh, you know, in gets to one, uh, you know, if it gets to greater than, you know, as it's greater than 30, uh, it runs and then it breaks. Now we had, be, we better be pretty sure that eventually this condition is going to get uh, hit, right? Otherwise it's just going to loop forever. Okay. So, so we might want to put in some other logic just for safety's sake, but this forever loop allows us to just go as long as necessary to get to this, uh, you know, to, to stay above this 30 uh, millimeters. All right, and then let's say let's say after this we want to go ahead and back it off, right? Let's say that we want to um, back it up a little bit. Let's say then we're going to go back and we're going to um, drive backwards. We're going to reverse 200 millimeters. So let's say that we want to um, let's say it's a situation where we want to go around this ball, right? So in this case, we're trying to figure out, hey, if I come up to a ball, right? If I come up to some obstacle and I get close to it, I'm going to back up. And then I'm going to do something else, right? So, so let's see, uh, let's see how we do here. All right. So in this situation, we're basically avoiding this buckyball. We're driving up to it, getting up to 30 millimeters. Uh, if we get inside 30 millimeters, we're going to back off, and then maybe we're going to go around it. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, we have a very careful robot here. All right, it's getting close. Okay, and then there's our backup, right? So, so basically, our our logic worked pretty well. So we we did our uh, you know we we did our distance sensor right. We uh, we put it inside of a loop. Let's take a look at our code here. We, we got our distance sensor value. We put it inside of a loop. Okay, this is our while true. We use some logic to do something, right? We use some, we use this if statement, distance sensor, sensor object in millimeters is greater than 30. We said, as long as this is true, right? So if this is true, do this. And that just kept edging the uh, robot forward. And once this was no longer true, this tested as false. Remember, our any Boolean statement reduces to true or false. Once this is false, it goes to our else, which breaks, right? The break is a break out of this loop, okay? And then basically it gets us lines 6 through 13, or sorry, lines 6 through 12 here are our loop. And basically this is going to loop forever until we hit this break uh, value, which occurs when this, uh, when this first if statement uh, reduces to false, right? So... So then we go through forward and then we are, it backs off and then we can go ahead and continue on with our program. Uh, best of luck.